Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Do you want to learn how to make some really amazing, cool art by laser engraving a painted canvas with a CO2 laser? If that's something you're interested in, stick around. We're about to jump right into it. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is prep our canvases. So I'm going to do one red and I'm going to do one blue. You can see I have two canvases here. They've already been painted uh, with two layers of white. Um, I always start off with uh, white on every single canvas I do. Um, just because I like to have that really nice base layer. Um, and note, you know, I'm about 8 to 12 inches away from my canvas. I'm taking really uh, slow strokes here to make sure that I get a nice even coverage. Uh, the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do in blue. <clears throat> We're going to use one canvas for our material test so that we can get the right settings for doing the laser engraving. And then once we have those settings, then we'll use the other canvas to actually do the engraving. So... And typically I like to do vertical and horizontal. Um, not always, just depends on how the paint is applying onto the canvas. Uh, with this one, I didn't find that it, that it really uh, took all that well. Um, even though, it, you know, it kind of appears that it's, it's going on really nice. I did find, you know, looking from the top down that there were a few areas that I missed. So this one I'm going to do um, horizontally and vertically. So right now I'm just doing a horizontal spray across just to make sure that I get really good even coverage. Uh, one thing that you'll want to note is once you paint your canvases, you want to actually let them dry. Uh, let them dry for at least 12 hours before you go and apply any other coat. Uh, the next step that we're going to do with this is we're going to paint them black. And you don't have to paint them black. I mean, it just depends on what it is that you're trying to achieve. So... But let's move on to the next step and let's apply the black to this. All right, so this is the paint I'm going to be using. Either I use satin or I use high gloss. And when I prep my canvases, I do two layers. I do one layer vertically and I do one layer horizontally. So let me show you how I do that. So we'll start off with the blue. Always make sure that you shake your paint up really well. Give it a test spray before you uh, apply it to your canvas. And I'm just going to start down here at the bottom. And you want to make sure that you're getting a nice even coat all the way across. So this is why I do mine horizontally and I do it vertically. And you can see I'm probably about 12 inches away from the canvas. And then for the red, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Start down here at the bottom. All right, and that's all there is to it. So extremely important that you let these dry overnight. If you only let them dry for just a few hours, most likely you're just gonna end up melting uh, the paint that's on top and you're not really gonna get the effect that you want. So my recommendation, at least 12 to 24 hours, let these dry before you, uh, before you get in and start doing your engraving. So, all right, so on to the next step. Let's go uh, prepare our image that we're going to engrave on here and set up our tests. So we're going to go process our image. I'm going to use the uh, free tool that is available on the web called Imager. Um, it is created or it has been created to allow you to process images for laser engraving. It's a really great tool. Um, you know, it does have some issues with all the different ads and what have you that are around the page that kind of annoy me. So I also have the paid offline version. Um, you can see down here at the bottom, this is kind of a sequential process. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go import an image in grayscale um, because we're going to do it in a laser engrave. 
So I'm just going to grab this image over here that I've already downloaded and I'm going to click open and it'll take a second here for it to actually pull it in. And then I'll scroll down and you can see here's my image and you can see on the left and right side, you know, the annoying ads that that pop up. I mean, you can close those, but you kind of have to work around them. It's a free tool, so, you know, it's a great option to use. <clears throat> So some of the other options that you would typically do is after you upload, you would do the crop and then the resize, or if you're adding text, um, you know, and then you go to material and download. Uh, because we are already working with a square image, I don't have to do any cropping, but I do have to do the resize. So I'm going to change this to 14 by 14 for my canvas. And I'm also going to change my DPI because I use uh, 320 DPI for all the images that I engrave. So this is where you set that. You can see here I'm setting it to 320 and then I'll click OK. And it takes a second or so to actually process and make its changes. And then once it does, you can just scroll down and now you'll have two images. So on the left is your original image and on the right is the one that you just um, that you just made some modifications to. All right, so we're not adding text. So the next step that we're going to do is uh, material. Um, but you'll notice I'm pointing out here the one touch. One touch is actually a really great um, a great option if you're pulling in uh, photographs and what have you. One touch will go and retouch everything on that image, and it saves you a lot of time and effort having to kind of play with the you know the brightness, the contrast, the gamma, etc. All individually. One touch, really what it does is it kind of processes the whole image, it, you know, sharpens it and it does everything for you. So it auto adjusts everything. Um, and typically I find that this one touch works really, really well. Um, I've never kind of messed with it after I've used one touch, but let's go in and pick our material. So if you're doing a diode laser, um, you would pick Norton, but we're doing a CO2. So I'm going to pick the CO2 slash two. Uh, because I have a two inch lens on my 80 watt mon port and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to pick white tile painted black. Click OK. And now it's going to go process my image again in the background. And then once it's done, you can kind of scroll down and you'll see it's now inverted my image. So it's essentially taken it and it's changed it to a negative image. Uh, negative image is what you're going to need when you go into Lightburn and uh, um, when we get this set up in Lightburn because that's uh, what you need to have set for engraving. And I'm just going to do a quick preview here. If you do any other type of, you know, engraving, whether you're doing it on wood and what have you, this tool will give you a preview of what it looks like on different woods. But this is essentially what we're going to try and achieve on our canvas. All right, now I'm going to download it. I always download it as PNG. I always find that works the best, but you know, it's your individual preference. And I don't change the file name. Um, I like the fact that it puts, you know, 320 in there. It puts whatever, you know, it's a CO22, it's white painted. So I like having that in there just as a really easy reference point. So click on save. And now we're going to go into Lightburn and we're going to get it all set up. All right, so here I am in Lightburn. I'm going to go import the image that we just processed using ImageR, and I'm going to bring it into Lightburn. And you can see there's my 14 by 14 negative image. And I'm going to do a quick preview here. I just want to see how it's going to look. And you'll notice, you know, this is kind of... Uh, what we're going to try and achieve. Um, I have the invert option selected here, which is going to give me a better view of kind of how this is going to look when it gets engraved onto the canvas. So just click OK here. And you'll notice that, um, you know, I have all of these different options already set up here. So this is my laser engraved canvas test. And essentially what I did was I took my image and I just kind of resized it um, down to about two by two. Uh, this way I can go in and I can create um, my engraved test where I'm going to go, you know, with a speed of about 350 and the power I'm going to set from 10% all the way up to 19%. 
I find anything after 19% kind of burns through the canvas. So we're going to give this a shot. Um, I do have an 80 watt CO2 laser. So that's kind of the next step, you know, is once we get this all set up, uh, we're going to take it out. We're going to put it on the laser and we're going to engrave it. And then we're going to take a look at the results and see if we can find what our best settings are. And this is, it's really important that you do this uh, laser engrave test. Um, whether you have a 40 watt or you know 150 watt, your power and your speed are going to be different than mine. Um, I found that this is a really good starting point, uh, especially with the 80 watt. Um, 350 is a really good speed. It's not the fastest speed, but sometimes, you know, changing the speed can actually slow things down. So 350, I find from other engravings that I've done and anywhere between 10% and 19% is kind of ideal. So we're going to find out exactly what the results are once we get this off the, off the laser and we'll take a look and see which image we think turned out the best. And I do like to use an image versus, you know, just a kind of a gray scale. Um, I've always kind of used images when I do my laser engraved or my, you know, my laser engraved testing um just because i want something that's more realistic to me grayscale yeah i mean sure you can get good results with a grayscale uh image that most people use and i'm sure you'll see a lot of um a lot of you know material tests out there that are using the grayscale kind of circle wheel kind of thing and for me i just i like something that's a little bit more realistic so i always try and pick an image um this one, you know, because we're going to engrave this and we're trying to achieve specific results on this. This is the one that we're going to use. So. All right. So let's go put this onto the laser and let's get it engraving. results we're going to go through each one of these so here's our 10 percent 11 12 up to 14 percent and then down here at the bottom here's our 15 percent all the way up to 19 percent so based on these results i chose to do the full engrave at 15%, just because I think the detail is uh, really nice there. You know, 16% looks really good as well, um, but I wanted this to be just a little bit lighter, so I went with 15%. So let's take a look at that. So here's the results of our full engrave. I think it turned out absolutely amazing for being done on a CO2 laser. And remember, I have an 80 watt Monport CO2 laser. Quite different to do a laser engrave on a CO2 than it is to do on a diode, but I think this turned out amazing. So, as you can see, my speed was 350 millimeters a second, and I went with a 15% power. This took roughly about 45 minutes, um, and it turned out to be about an 11 by 11 canvas. So, 
Well, thank you all for watching. I hope that you picked up some tips and tricks on how to laser engrave a painted canvas using a CO2 laser. If this was uh, a video that you enjoyed, please uh, consider liking and subscribing and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.